Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new week of the Playmaker Podcast. This is the holiday season. We got so much stuff coming up. But guess what? We have both season coming. And with me is my partner, Dallas Clint. How you doing this holiday season? Doing good, doing good, doing good. Hey, you got everything packed up and ready for Christmas, sir? Yeah, just about. That's good, that's good. So, uh, hey, man, we, in, we, we are in postseason mode, Dallas. Yeah, you know, it's that time of year where, you know, you don't blame the young bucks for protecting themselves and getting that money. You don't blame the fans for wondering if they could ever expand that nice little playoff. You know, it's, it's the weird thing of the FBS. We call it postseason, but I mean, is it really? Good point, good point. Uh, before we get started, uh, we did have a game last week between the Naval Academy and the Army Cadets in uh, Dallas. You you want to um, recap the game for us? It was an ass woman. <laughs> what it was. The Army Black Knights have had a down year, and that down year continued. It, it was not close, like, ever. Malcolm Perry blew out the Army Black Knights with 304 yards rushing and zero passing attempts. Like, it... Malcolm Perry, that. who already came into the game with 1,500 rushing yards on the season, blew out the Army Black Knights with 304 yards rushing and zero passing attempts. One man... And, but no, here's the craziest the thing. Game. Chubba Hubbard, I feel like in a big scheme of things, got snubbed. Because we all know that a defensive player is not going to win the Heisman. Even though Chase Young is probably the the sure bet, if Chase Young comes out, I feel like he is the only for sure pick. In the Joe Burrow had, you know, this is his first year starting, had to co- go through a lot, a lot of adversity. Coach O gave him a chance, all that good stuff. That's cool. That's great, Tua. You don't know what the injuries, but Chubba Hubbard, man, like what he did at Oklahoma State, what he did in the Big Twelve, that that's absurd. But then you look at Malcolm Perry. Malcolm Perry is a quarterback in a triple option offense that's going to finish the year with 1,800 yards rushing. And that's not even considering what Navy is going to do in their bowl game. There is a legitimate possibility that Malcolm Perry and Chubba Hubbard did not get to go to New York or not even talked about in the slightest bit like Jonathan Taylor was and are both going to have well over 2,000 all-purpose yards because right now Malcolm Perry has 1,000 passing yards too. They're both going to finish well over 2,000 all-purpose yards for the season and nobody talks about them. This man ran for 300 yards in a like, game at the quarterback position. No, no it, is it doesn't maybe. matter how you slice it. It, it really doesn't and matter the offensive do. scheme a quarterback <laughs> ran for 304 yards. It don't matter what the offense is. How do you let the quarterback run for 304 yards? He touches the ball. Are you but, like, at least you the, the quarterback touches much. the ball first every play. It's like, bro, like, did y'all just automatically take the pitch, man, and just let the quarterback do it? There's, there's no explaining. Whether they're coming back off of a draw, whether they're scrambling and, you know, man coverage just breaks down, it, there's no excuse. There's bad seasons, and then there's just, damn, what did you do to piss off those dang on midshipmen? Cause that's a lot of blocking, darn it. I don't know if you realize a quarterback had a triple option, just the way that the sweeps, the dives, and the traps work. It's a lot of good blocking that has to happen for a quarterback to get loose like that in the triple option. Well, I tell you. Well, that's the Army Navy game for you. I guess I can't say much about it, just... Yeah, that's really yards. That, that's, that's whenever you did he did he did he even he even threw a I said it ball. twice. No, he he didn't. Throw the ball I, in the game. And I don't blame you, bro, because I had to. I couldn't believe it. It was like, yo, like, well, when you think about it, when you run for three hundred four yards, you don't have time to throw a pass. Because the weird thing with the triple option is, you really don't want to throw the ball. You only throw the ball when you absolutely have to. And if Malcolm Perry had three hundred four yards himself, hell, he didn't have to. <laughs> That's just crazy. That quarterback didn't throw a single pass, blew out a team, ran for 304 yards. I don't know what to say on that one. That that I can't I'm remember Malcolm that. Perry's team. I minute. think he is. I can't remember. I have to double check because 
And the reason I say that is, you know, going into next year, Memphis lost their head coach. A lot of dudes are probably going to be, you know, graduating, maybe transferring NFL draft. It's going to be very interesting because if Malcolm Perry was coming back, coming off a year like this, Jesus. Like the Keenan Reynolds year, the Ahmad Bradshaw year for Army. It's, it's rare when Navy and Army can get quarterbacks to do what Malcolm Perry did this year. I hope he's back for another year. So um, that's that. And uh, well, uh, yeah, going Navy into a bowl. Ten wins. Going into a bowl game. But I tell you, then. The Navy, man, the American Conference need we, that conference. We, that's what I'm saying, bro. We that. have to, Oof. we had to institute the conference champion rule. We can't be like literally everybody else because the American Conference, like Navy, could have 11 wins with like what three, four losses. Like they could have 11 wins with four losses. That's what I'm saying. Like, play, Navy's playing 15 games and they didn't play in a conference title game. Like and they're not playing in a New Year's Six game. Like think about that. Navy has a 15 game season, and they're not playing in really any meaningful games. Bro, I tell you, shout out to the Naval Academy. Good win, rivalry win, dominant fashion. That's all you want in in your last regular season game. Now that fun business is out the way. No news here. No surprise here. We all knew it after he did what he did to Alabama. We reiterated after what he did to Georgia. They just made it official on Saturday night. Joe Burrow, the Heisman runner. Yeah, see. And, and it wasn't even close. We have to because this is a college football podcast. But I think the I think the real conversation, because let's be honest, like Joe Burrow won every award you possibly could leading up to the Heisman. Like it was it was a formality. But with that, what do you think about the people that act fake shocked? When Jalen Hurts won second, like, what do you think about the people who really thought that Chase Young or Justin Fields should have at least gotten second place when they're from the same school and naturally split their own votes? How can you for sure be the second best player in the country when you're not the best player on your team? You just had the answer right there. You got two people in the same school. It's 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 just weird though, because you know I'm 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 learning. Actually, the, the thing is that Jonathan Taylor was fifth. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> what I'm confused about though is because you know through Facebook and Twitter and the polls and everything, you kind of learn the homers. You learn the people who might know what they're talking about, but they don't really want to like really watch it seriously like that. And then you see the people where it's just like you know they'll have like a different picture for their avatar. They won't even have like a real at name. They just use the at name that Twitter spits out. They just it's just like why is it really so hard to believe that a guy who's played a more J- J- Jalen Hurts if if hypothetically Jalen Hurts beats LSU do do people not understand how many BCS slash New Year's Six slash college football playoff bowls this man would have played in slash one along with the conference championship games and wins like Jalen Hurts has like a ridiculous amount of college football experience He's essentially like the Peyton Manning, the Dan Marino. He's a great statesman of college football right now. How was it so hard to believe in his last year of football? <laughs> He's second in a Heisman run. Oh, by the way, he, he only quarterbacked Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma quarterbacks, for whatever reason, just keep making it to New York. I, 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 I just I don't. Because let's be honest, we can't really say much about Joe Burrow. Well, what can we say? It hasn't been said. If anything, we th- them bringing three people is a head scratcher enough. The hell, they should have just brought Jalen. Why are you gonna bring two dudes from the same school? Like, come on now. The, I want to know how that really happened. I want to know how that went down because, to be real, Chase Young is not only a pure defensive player; he's a lineman. You see, sixteen point five sacks. And let's be real, force fumbles are nice and everything, but force fumbles aren't going to win you a Heisman. They're not going to eye pop. 16 and a half sacks for a defensive end, a defensive lineman, that's what you're going to look at. I'm sorry, but J.J. Watt and Aaron Donald had a well over 20 sacks in years where they weren't even, they were chuckled. They were mentioned in passing during blowouts on Sunday Night Football. 
nobody thought that J.J. Watt or Aaron Donald were going to win NFL MVP with 20 sack years. 16 and a half sacks leading the country. I think that's more so guys needing, you know, better production, guys needing to stay in for their senior years and actually put some real numbers up more so than, oh, my God, 16 and a half sacks. That should give you a Heisman finalist spot. I don't see it because we all know that it's an offensive award. And you got guys with over 2,000 all-purpose yards sitting at home and not even being talked about. But you're going to give me a DN where his quarterback is top five in Heisman voting. It's just, I'm sure they make a lot of ad money off of the Heisman ceremony. It's it's nice to have. It's it's a good experience for the guys. It's a good experience for the past Heisman winners because it's an actual society. It's an actual fraternity and all that good stuff. It's just, damn. If I'm Chase Young, if I'm just a fool. <laughs> Good to see John. Good to see John. That's another reason. Like that's another reason. Because you know, Derrick Henry, awesome. he's busy right now. But Derrick Henry, RG three, Tim Tebow, Johnny Manziel. Even though Derrick Henry's doing real good, you like to see guys who might not have panned out in the NFL. You want to see guys in the modern era be there with the other greats because you want to. You don't want to be like the NFL one hundred, where you kind of sort of forget and you have recency bias. You look at Johnny Manziel. And RG3 and Tim Tebow, you can put them up against past Heisman winners legitimately. Joe Burrow is tricky because at least Johnny Manziel had two years. I think Tim Tebow had three. I think RG3, he had his Heisman year, then he had his senior season after. And yeah, one year Heisman, like literally one year as a starter. But hey, he won it. He was the best player this year. Can't argue with that. The knows that Joe Burrow put up in that conference at that school. What, what what more can you ask for? Like, bro, tr- transfer, recruit, walk on. It doesn't matter. LSU having a quarterback put up a year like that, they might not ever get it again. But it doesn't matter if they cash in and win a natty this year. It doesn't matter. Just imagine what that'll be like a school like LSU Stop. to have a single season like this if they win a national title off of a transfer quarterback in his fifth year. That's what we're going to leave this at because, uh, like I said earlier, we are in bowl season. Bowl season begins Friday. And I know all y'all seen it. I don't post it so many times on Facebook. I don't retweet. I don't post it at on Twitter and we tweet it on Twitter. If y'all want something to smoke, y'all can come get something to smoke for me in Dallas. Yeah, 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 I think. I mean, hey. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all can think y'all can pick better than us, go for it. Cause uh, we both over sixty five percent in in win percentage right now. And that's with the hits. year. That, thank God we're not doing college basketball, but that's with the crazy year that this year was. Franchise quarterbacks getting hurt. Big Twelve being the Big Twelve, Minnesota, Baylor, Penn State looking like they had a little bit of a shot. Wisconsin. It's it was, a, it was and we picked group of five too. We didn't just do what you know the major networks do and just gloss over everybody unless it's UCF pissing everybody off. We picked games that we didn't have a clue about either. So, so the final standings were one fifteen and forty six for me, one hundred seven and fifty four for Dallas. And we picked one hundred and sixty one hundred wins each. So feel free, take your shot. And if you beat us, there'll be a prize for you at the end of it. Damn. So, uh, well, so we kicking off Friday. Bahamas Bowl, the Buffalo Bulls, a name, a team that Dallas mentioned last on the last podcast, mm-hmm. trying to figure out where they was at. Somehow they went, they went seven and five and made it to a bowl game. Took a nice vacation trip to the Bahamas to take on the Charlotte 49ers, who also are 75. And, you know, opening up the bowl season, this is one of the games I was talking about. Darnell, you never want to be a team playing in an early Friday afternoon bowl game in a completely different country. But, you know, here Buffalo and Charlotte are. This is their postseason, quote, unquote. And both teams are 75. Both teams are from group of five conferences. Both teams were not talked about on the national radar. Neither were ranked. 
this is probably one of the more difficult games to pick because you just don't know who's actually going to give a damn. I'm going to go with Charlotte because Charlotte actually, I don't want to say made some noise, but they played some teams this year. They had a little bit going on this year. And they're they're building up that program well. I know they had somebody drafted last year. So, you know, program building. I think Buffalo's in a stagnant state. I think Charlotte the bowl game when to keep the trajectory of that program going the way it is. Sitting here looking at ESPN right now. 87% is picking Buffalo. Now is that because they just seen the name Buffalo and just went that way? I'm and never heard of Charlotte because or Charlotte got a power five win Charlotte? this year, didn't they? That I, I, I think it's I think it's name I think it's name brand. I, you know, Khalil Mack he came from Buffalo. Tyree Jackson he came from Buffalo. Those two, I mean they or Tyree Jackson I, I can't remember. But either way, the quarterback they just had in Khalil Mack put those boys on the map. So let's see here. Uh... What's that? Like Rubber State, they beat UMass, they beat, lost to Appalachian State. That was a shootout with Appalachian State. Lost to Clemson, lost to FAU and FIU. No, they ain't beat no power. They ain't beat no power five team. They only beat North Texas, Middle Tennessee, Utah, Marshall. Wow, the only North power five team they played was Clemson? Damn. Well, yep. Well, I mean, and it was a massacre. That's Clemson's fault for scheduling a Charlotte as a non-conference game. But um, uh, I really think it's a name thing. Charlotte, Charlotte's on the rise. And when you got, like I said, when you got two group of five teams playing in the first bowl, it's an early Friday. They've been in the Bahamas. Who actually remembered to play in an exhibition game? That means nothing. Who remembered they had a game this weekend? That's really. You know, I'm going to roll with the crowd. I'm going to go ahead and go with Buffalo. I'm going to roll with the crowd on this one. All right, look here. Tropical um, Smoothie Cafe has enough money to sponsor a bowl. Damn, I know. Like that. Yeah. Look here, Utah State. Y'all had an open down season. Can y'all please finish this off? Well, three right points for me, please. Thank you. For marijuana, didn't it? Three. Including Jordan. Oh. Really? Well, not certain yeah. cases, hint, hint, are extreme and not the norm. All I'm saying is, bro, it's not a good look. We do the nice little Twitter graphic announcement that you're coming out to the NFL draft, and then you and two other teammates get caught with marijuana before the bowl game. Not a good look. I'm not going to say that maybe he should just go back to school because of it. All I know is I haven't heard a damn thing about Jordan Love this year. And when you're talking about the NFL draft, when you're talking about the third round and then quote unquote character concerns, which really means they just want to save money. I'm going with Utah State Utah too, State. because let's be honest. I know, granted, this could have changed, but you know, bowl games Friday. Boys going out to the NFL draft, the head coach would be dumb and a dick to spend this dude. At, if he, he I don't know what message you're proving to your team if you suspend the quarterback that's going to the NFL draft before the bowl game against Kent State. Kent State made a bowl? Shoot. Okay. Yeah, six and six, Kent State, Golden Flash. I don't know, man, but dude, I still remember when there was a chance where they were going to have to use the APR to see which teams with losing records could get a bowl. And I just... uh, Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? It's a long process. It's a hard thought out process. Yeah, I know. I was there. I was there from March of this year thinking about how I'm going to do this, doing all my research, trying to get everything right. What platforms can we use and how we going to record it and how we going to make it sound good and make it all this happen. And then I came upon Anchor, the Anchor app on my phone, the easiest choice I could ever make to do a podcast. 
It's free to use. You don't gotta pay for nothing. You can record episodes whenever you're ready. You can edit it and then you can release them when you want to. And you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how you're gonna distribute it on other platforms because Anchor has partnerships with Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Castbox, Pocket Cast, whatever you name it. Because the Playmates Wild Podcast is the podcast that I use. We are on all them platforms. We are on nine platforms just by using the Anchor app. So pretty much all the questions that you have questions about about doing a podcast, go to the Anchor app or go to the Anchor website, anchor.fm.com and just search through it, ask questions. Because I'll tell you, a free app that does all this, there's nothing more you can ask for. I even got friends, they doing their podcast on the Anchor app. Faith Talk, you might have heard of it because it's very good and it's great that it's an app like this. It's a website like this that makes it easier for people to do podcasts and do what they love best, talking about the things that they love to talk about. So give Anchor a try. See how much you like. It. We'll love to hear your podcast. Celebration Bowl, Alcon State, North Carolina a t Then we went. Then we go to North Carolina a t Now, granted, this is because of FAMU having a postseason ban. Family had a postseason ban. They would have won the MEAC easily, but they were ineligible for the postseason. So um, North Carolina A&T has been the standard of the MEAC. Alcorn State's been the standard of the SWAC in football. Southern had a good year, but, I mean, Alcorn State's Alcorn State. And, I mean, at the end of the day, beat somebody. This is basically the de facto black college national championship game. So, I mean, hell, if you're tired of seeing Alabama and Clemson beat them which is what Auburn and LSU did. So Southern, Grambling, Bethune, Hampton, Delaware State, beat them. That being said, North Carolina A&T wasn't the best team in the MEAC, but I think Alcorn State was definitely the best team in the SWAC. I'm picking Alcorn State in this one. No, I'm picking up. Kind of missed this. All right, uh, we're gonna skip the New Mexico Bowl, you know. No, no, no mulligans here. You get your mulligans when you sign up for the ESPN Bowl pick 'em. Me and Darnell are gentlemen, we do not do that Bush League foolishness. There is no reason to think that Central Michigan will catch one over San Diego State. I'm not feeling the cure. Well, brother, either, big, so. big fella, if you're gonna do it like this, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. We can only pick the games we are given. Liberty, hey, Liberty has an FBS independent. Since you don't want to pick, I'll just say something about Liberty. Liberty has an FBS independent. They're one of the religious schools, just like BYU and Notre Dame. So they have a little bit of an extra incentive financially, snicker, snicker, to stay independent and not deal with the conference. They are having a very good season in basketball right now. And their football team, if they beat Georgia Southern, who only, by the way, ruined Appalachian State's chance at getting a national championship this year from your boys at the Playmakers blog. Uh, this is actually a very significant thing. This is their first year in the postseason in the FBS. I think they'll finish with like I think nine wins? I'm not sure, but as an independent eight, eight. Eight. Okay, It'll so be, Liberty finishing with eight five. wins as an FBS independent trying to navigate that schedule and making all that good stuff. That's actually a really good start. One of three independent Who teams to be bowling the this season. So. other one besides Notre Dame? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. BYU. Well, since you talked about it, I'm still picking Georgia Southern. You beat Appalachian State, and, and, you have my respect. I'm picking and Liberty simply for the fact of, like, I appreciate the independence and, like, what they try to do. And I'm hoping that somebody other than Notre Dame who has the name value can put together a string of good seasons. Army was looking like they were close, but eh. Boca Rotombo. Couple of 10 win teams here down in Boca Raton, Florida. No, no Lane Kiffin. Oh, well, I believe it was no Lane Kiffin. I ain't hear no word on that yet. But as of right now, no Lane Kiffin. It don't matter, though. We got SMU Mustangs against I think FAU no Lane Island. Kiffin is to tell. I think FAU is basically playing a home game. I'm not saying that, you know, playing a home game for your bowl is going to just immediately deflate a team. But, you know, Lane Kiffin's gone. New regime. A lot of turnover. Them playing a home game is good because you kind of sort of have a chance for that interim staff to not have to deal with a lot of supervision. 
and you know brouhaha and foolishness. But I think SMU is a better team than Florida Atlantic, and I think that SMU's coach, whatever good sir's name is, is doing a hell of a job. And a team in transition should not be rare. I guess SMU's gonna get it. Uh, I have to, I have to, I have to roll with you on that one. I like FAU, but from the one I'm looking at, matter of fact, what it is, it is like 80 20 split to set SMU. That sounds and like remember, a ain't coaching this game. Coaching is an X factor in the power five. So imagine what it is in the group of five. What, who was paying attention to Florida Atlantic? For all the people who are trying to argue on Florida Atlantic's side and why they got it, they had a first team All American tied in and all that good stuff. Where were you three years ago? Because, you know, me and Darnell, you know, when we were trying to find schools and everything, because, you know, we knew about FAU. We knew they always had a football team. Hell, we knew they were in the CUSA. But, I mean, nobody cared about until Lane Kiffin got there. It matters, people. Trust us. All right. The other Florida team, Wait, that's not a group of our team. Friday, it's not power. That's why you. I made your mistake. Oh, you, know you did that last week. I did it's it this Florida. week. It's the best state for college football. So I don't know, you know, all this. It's just semantics. <laughs> F-A-F-I-U. Arkansas, Arkansas State. State, guys. Red Arkansas Bulls. State. This is like their, what is it, like eighth straight season bowling. They're on a ridiculous bowl streak. It's not Bobby Bowden levels yet, but they've been bowling for quite some time. Yeah, my man is on Arkansas Damn, I'm only two against Florida. Well, you know, just, we got we got to call it how we say. I think I re- I heard somewhere it was absurd when I heard. It. I think FAU FIU is like over outside of Miami this year. They have not been good on the road. Oh no, oh, Montgomery Alabama Miami. is not Miami. Mm-hmm. I can attest to that personally. It is not Miami. Oh, the Las Vegas ball. Oh, it's the crisp. Peterson Bowl, even though he stepped down from Washington. Here comes Boyd. You always State. want to leave a place better than when you found it. And I don't know if he did that with Washington. All I know is Boise State is ranked and Washington is not. A 80-20 split for Boise State over a power five team. I would say this is a name brand watch, but this is the same team that beat Florida State in Tallahassee after a last minute change. Pure coincidence. Um... Dude, I'm rolling with Boise. I, I, Washington had a stretch, kind of like how Alabama did before Nick Saban got there and how Clemson had before Dabble Sweeney got there, where they were like kind of just there in the Pac-10 before it became the Pac-12. I don't know if that's what's about to happen, but I do know that Boise State is still Boise State. They are going to get this win, and they are going to put themselves in the driver's seat for the postseason rankings and preseason rankings for the New Year's Six months. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we finally got to a power five team, and we did not pick the power five team. I mean, hell, when is when is when is the ACC or the Big Twelve going to smarten up? I mean, how much longer are we going to have to sit through this? I know that Fresno State got the job done last year, but I mean, they went four and eight this year. Boise State is just a model of consistency. They're just here, and they keep on trucking. These at large bids, if they would just put some respect on Boise's name, if Boise went independent in five years. With the name brand they built up, with the resume they built up in the BCS, in five years as an independent, would you view Boise State as a group of five or a Notre Dame? Because I think, so I, I get, think if Boise I State was an independent years. and they got to choose their own schedule and not be shackled by the Mountain West, they might take some lumps. They might go, you know, five and seven, six and six those first two years, but that third year and that fourth year, that's when they're going to start going, you know, eight and four, nine and three. You're going to start looking like, well, damn, Boise. They're, they're, they basically have an ACC schedule. They basically have a Big 12 schedule. As, man, especially if they, if they got the schedule a Louisville, a Rutgers, a TCU, a Kansas, a Kansas State. If they got the schedule, they're in the Power Five. Give me a... That's a of fact, I think going forward, we might, we might be crowning two teams, depending on how these games go, because if I remember correctly, UCF and Boise State getting together. Well, you know, it, I wonder why at this point, why the AD hasn't, does it, do, hasn't done it, but it's probably something to do with financials, which you have to be able to understand. 
I can't wait for that. UCF and Boise going ahead. Oh, oh, that's another oh, thing. Home, home God, Boise was independent and opened up with a UCF classic, a home and home. Like, that's how you open up the season. Well, hey, that that would have been great. But you know, time will tell, Darnell. Time will tell with both UCF and Boise. All right, Dallas. Um, I gotta put you on the spot just a tad bit here, sir. New Orleans Bowl, you know, Dallas. He knows about the UAB program. Problem is, he knows a lot. He knows just the same amount about the Appalachian State program. Mm -hmm. I'm going Appalachian State. They lost their coach too, though. They uh, did I mean, the you. State. <laughs> the here's the confusing thing about the timing of head coaches in college football taking their new jobs is when a team goes four and seven or three and eight their season's done they want to call you in and announce you as head coach hell they ain't got nothing to wait for the weird thing is though it's like bro like when you recruit for appalachian state when you recruit for a school that hasn't been out the FCS for a decade yet. When you recruit for a school that's in the most disrespected and most forgotten conference in the FBS, it's hard for me to want, it's hard for me to determine what the motivation is for your players to stay locked in and stay in tune because Appalachian State isn't, they're not going to crack the top 20 for another two years in the Sun Belt. They're probably not going to be competing for a New Year's Six Bowl for a while. The head coach knows that. That's why he left. I, I would imagine that when coaches do things like this, they have an assistant they've been grooming. They have an assistant they trust. Because in the perfect world, Darno, I would like to think that college football head coaches do not just leave their teams high and dry before a bowl, and nobody is capable of keeping the ship on track. I mean, Appalachian State is miles better than UAB, so I'll pick Appalachian State too. But like. I, I really hope they don't get upset because it's gonna it's it's just one of those things where it's like dang bro like you you still in 2019 have some of these analysts you still have some of these peers you still have some of these old school college football journalists that started their career back in the 80s that don't understand they'll say oh well you know I don't agree with it but I understand it what's there to disagree about at this point. Dude, if you're going to leave Appalachian State and those dudes high and dry, why should a Chase Young play in the bowl game? Why should Chase Young even, why should it even be a difficult decision? Why is Chase Young even thinking of staying? Dude put up NFL numbers in the, in the Big Ten, and he's thinking of coming back. For why? Okay. And uh, we're going to close this week out, Dallas. Ooh, okay. Monday's game. Bad boys, motor, because pass we go. The Knights. A quiet nine and three year. When when do you ever think a nine and three year would go quietly? I guess Marshall Thundering Herd. This is where my bias come in. I'm going UCF. I don't even think it's bias. I mean, didn't UCF have like the freshman of the I know they had a freshman of the year. And that's what I'm trying to think. They had an all freshman team. I think it was PFFs. I think it was PFFs all freshman team, and I think their quarterback made their first team. So UCF and dude, this is the craziest thing. Say what you will about his NFL career, because damn it, I could say a lot. But Blake Bortles, like George O'Leary and Blake Bortles, when they won that Fiesta Bowl, it kind of sort of felt like that was going to be the peak. It kind of felt like that was a Northern Illinois and a Ball State, not a Boise State. You go to Mackenzie Milton, the tragic injury he suffered last year, then the dude that's their quarterback now, his name escapes me. Like, bro, like, UCF has a, a stable of horses. Just like I say the Boise State should probably go independent, UCF is a Big 12 team. I don't care what people say. They're going to blow the doors off of Marshall. And really the question is, because they have a lot of losses and they lost to Tulane. It doesn't matter who else you lose to, Darnell. Once you lose to Tulane, questions have to be asked. But 
I wonder how the preseason rankings are going to go. They might not make the, the postseason rankings, but I wonder how the preseason rankings are going to go. Yeah, so that's – hey, we both going UCF. So far, so far, only two well, disagreements between me and Dallas. This is a lot better. A lot well, better than my issue for me. And which two? Uh, I, I'm okay. going with Buffalo. You taking Charlotte. I, I took uh, – I'm taking Georgia Southern. You taking Mary. Okay. So we're going to end it right there because we're going to be back before Christmas. Because, uh, yeah. All right, he ain't trying. I want, I want my brother to enjoy. Well, it's not some just that. I mean, let's 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 call a spade a spade here. I mean, we have Miami going against Louisiana Tech in something called the Independence Bowl, and I don't know who the hell is going to win that game. This bowl season, it's it's a sham. It's a farce. It's a money making move. And it's a lot of other insults I could come up with, but we're out of time. So that that means that quickly, let me break down the bowl teams by conference, Dallas. Okay. The American has seven. The, okay. the ACC has ten. Okay. Big Ten has nine. The Big Twelve has six. Okay. CUSA has seven. Oh God. The MAC has eight. How? Pac Twelve has seven. The okay. SEC has nine. Okay. The Sun Belt has five. The Mountain West has seven, and the other three spots belong to the independent. I... Yes, people, I, I put I put in some. Well, well, I mean, hell no, no, ESPN gives you the tallies themselves too. But I mean, um, I think takeaway. I think the biggest takeaway from all of this, and I will scream it until they lose to Ohio State or God forbid Oklahoma if the, if the sky falls through, dude. Until Clemson loses. One of these bowl games, you got the ACC supposed to be the worst conference. You got the ACC supposed to have nobody, They're not playing anybody, They're not doing anything. I I have to ask another question because the yardstick keeps moving. So does this mean that we have too many bowls and we need to scale this down and focus on creating an actual national championship and focusing on creating actual prestige for these bowl games and trimming the fat, or did we just want? Did we just want Ohio State to be good? Did we just want Georgia to be good? Did we just want Penn State to be good? Did we desperately want Oklahoma to make it through the crowd? Because, dude, they're on like a 26, 27 game win streak, and damn near the entire conference. I know it's got like sixteen teams, is an absurd number, but you got ten teams that are both eligible on the on the conference, man. Like what? It it can't be. There's nobody in the conference not playing anybody, but then they got ten teams ball eligible. I mean, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let me get my notes here. Uh, five. Shoot, next week when we talk, when we get ready for next week's. We got five ACC games. That that's includes the semifinals that's coming up. Too. Yeah, and I mean, even though it's a sham and ridiculous, stupid, dumb, asinine, absurd, Virginia's playing in the New Year's Six Bowl when I easily could have went to a Baylor. But hell, I'll give you Notre Dame over Virginia. I mean, Jesus. But hey, like for even though even though the Orange Bowl negotiated that contract. Yeah, the ACC team, not named Clemson, in the Orange Bowl. I, I just – Notre Dame – I feel like if Notre Dame didn't get blown the hell out by Michigan, things would have been different. And I I just don't see I, – I don't see how you can have 10 teams bowl eligible and you're not playing everybody because every, every year – the things that people use to justify the SEC is, oh, they put an SEC team, blah, blah, blah. The worst team in the SEC is better than the best team in the blah. And the SEC rarely goes undefeated in the bowl season. So, yeah, there you have it. Those are the bowl teams by conference. Uh, we just got you started for this night's 
couple of days of bowl season. Uh, we'll be back next week to talk some most of it, and then we'll be back for a third week to pretty much cover everything that's going to happen from New Year's, from like basically the 30th all the way down to the 6th of, of the New Year. <laughs> pretty much, that's, that'll be week three for us in bowl season. And then the uh, following week on the 13th, it's the National Championship game, so we'll get you ready for that. It'll be interesting to see who was in the National Championship this time. Down in the the big yeah, I'm expecting New some chaos to happen, but we'll see. Cause it just seems like it's that kind of year. And also, we have to remember, do Heisman winners don't really do well when it comes to winning national championships. And speaking of New Orleans, well, they did what they we, thought, we they thought, thought they would they do were. on Monday Night Football. They let Thomas off the hook for real. Uh, two, two, and uh, one team. Looked it like Traz and the other team looked it like Ray ready for a Super Bowl. Surely it can't be a team led by Jerry Jones because they're not winning a Super Bowl for the foreseeable future. So, uh, yeah, one team season pretty it ain't officially over, but it's pretty much over. Bro, Kirk Cousins Thanks is still the quarterback for the Vikings. Keep hope alive. I'll tell you who that team is in the NFL podcast. And finally, Dallas can have some happiness. No, I can't. <laughs> It seems like every time I turn around, bad news comes out about this damn franchise. I'm happy for what? <laughs> I know that never came up. Uh, well, uh, we got, we'll find we'll find out when we talk about it in the NFL. And uh, that looks like all the wrestling fans on apology. <laughs> for what? Actually, I do. I forgot how big Wednesday was, how big Wednesday night is going to be. We have title matches galore, and these so are the really, matches we've You're really going to buy that, that crud that they're selling. You're really going to fall for the trap again, huh? They're not going to... But, hey. They're not, they're they're not going to give you we what you done. think you want. I hope I hope all of you out there realize this. Like, they're just giving you just enough to make you care and change the channel for more than 15-minute increments. They just want you to care a little bit more for a couple minutes, you're going to get a lot of false finishes. You're going to get a lot of DQs. You're going to get a lot of no causes. I hope you don't think that magically all four titles are changing on one night. No worry. I'll be joining you with this Wednesday on the Twitter. Because I want to see what's going to happen. Dallas, I think it's, I think it's time. I well, think somebody's losing their title. All on the line, bro. I mean, it's... I worry because it's... It's WWE competing with somebody else. It's once NXT went to USA and they legitimized it as a third brand in that hot shot to Survivor Series, I began to worry. No, granted, I mean, NXT has different talent, has Triple H running things or in Orlando. Vince McMahon didn't even watch NXT. He just randomly pulled people up that one time before um, the muscle champ got hurt again. But, I mean, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, still, we, we still got to wait for us to talk about it together in the new year. Nobody yeah, is. I'm not changing my mind on that. I, I, just, I just hope certain things die out by the time we record another wrestling episode because they not, Vince McMahon tripled down on that damn Bobby Lashley Lana storyline. And I'm just, who Vince McMahon is a stubborn man. He will, he will go down with a ship. Until it was all the way under the water. Dude, I watched. I literally forgot TLC was coming on. I turned to it and I watched Baron Corby beat Roman Reigns. I was bootlegging it, and once the stream gave up, I gave up. Also, I mean, I just, it's fitting that, because we're not going to record, so this is basically all they're going to get. Uh, it was fitting that Vince McMahon and Triple H weren't there, and that Kari Sane basically worked, worked a match with a concussion. Seven eighths of the way through. Paul Heyman was in charge of that match, of course. So say with that what you will. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this past five minutes because that's all you get. And we give up. We're tired. At this point, it's just like, yo, why? Why does Kari Sane have to suffer for that when she's gonna retain? And when it just, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Basketball fans, guess what? I'm doing the NBA Christmas special, and I'm bringing a special guest. Is that with the one me Cowboys fan? 
Oh no. Somebody some somebody doesn't somebody that does his own podcast and so I like what he does. We be trying we work we work something out. Me and him we gonna talk NBA. So you gonna get your Christmas basketball you from me. He's from New York. I might throw I might throw something in. I might throw the Nets in the in the Nets in there. We'll see. We'll see now. Now that kind of now that kind of mm-hmm. makes me sad because I know he was from New York. Hell, maybe you need to be nice. Talk talk about something else. Jesus, talk about the Grizzlies or something. Don't don't make him do that. He's supposed to be coming on to have fun with you, not. Ugh. Well, we'll see how that goes and. Uh... My weekend started. I got it. I'm hopping on somebody else's podcast because they enjoy the college football so much. They wanted me on their podcast now. So I'll be special guest on somebody's podcast later on in the week. I will probably be enjoying my school play for a national championship for the Yeah, shout out to University West, West Florida. Florida. University. Florida. University of West Florida. They are in the national championship against Minnesota State. Will they bring home the title the next time we talk so. to y'all? So two years ago, ironically, on my graduation night, we came a little bit short against Texas A&M Kingsville and the future starting quarterback of the Birmingham Steel of the now defunct AAF. But we shall see. This is Adam Thielen's on the box. All right. That's it. We'll be back for week three to talk more of these bowl games here that y'all love so much. And by the way, if you if you really want to outpick us, go ahead, go ahead and join the join the group and see what you can do against us. Put your heart. Somebody can have some fun. With that being said, so with that being said, you know me, the host down there, the Prayer Maker South. You know my co-host over there, Dallas fan from Pensacola. We'll have a little chat. Go Argos and Pokemon.